right, in this video, we're going to do some calculations, an example, finding the component of one of these vectors along the other and the projection of each vector onto the other. All right, so we're going to start by finding the component of V along W. So this is a scalar quantity. You want to make sure that you know these formulas for calculating by the time we get to an exam. This is a scalar quantity that measures how much of V is along W. And so that is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the vector you're projecting onto. So that's not a hard formula to memorize. The key thing is knowing cross product, dot product, but remembering it's a scalar will help with that. And then being able to think about magnitude of the vector that you're projecting onto. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the dot product. I'll just do that scratch work up here, V dot W. Uh, so I'll take three times negative two will give me negative six, plus one times one is one, plus negative one times negative one is also one, so I get four. All right, so that negative four on that dot product tells us that we have an obtuse angle between our two vectors here, so that's important in thinking about the geometry there. Um, I'm also gonna need the magnitude of W, So I'll have the square root of negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 squared is 1 plus negative 1, the quantity squared is 1. So I get square root of 6. Okay, so the component of V along W, sometimes we might say the scalar component of V along W, but it is a scalar, obviously, uh, is negative 4 over square root of 6. Okay, so the negative tells us that uh, when I visualize V along W, that that part is gonna be in the opposite direction of W, that's what the negative tells me, and then the absolute value of this tells me how long that vector would be. We will look at the graph at the end of this video. Um, all right, so that's the component of V along W. The other thing that I might be interested in is the vector projection of V onto W. And sometimes students have a hard time distinguishing between these two things. The component of V along W is a scalar quantity. The projection of V onto W is a vector. And so it's a vector of this magnitude, well, of the absolute value of this magnitude. Um, to calculate that, I use this component, V dot W, divided by the magnitude of W. And then I take that times a unit vector that is along W. So this scalar quantity is times a unit vector that is in the direction of W. So that would be the vector W divided by its magnitude. So you can rearrange this formula. If I have the magnitude of W times the magnitude of W, I can simplify that on the denominator. But I think about it like this so that I can remember the formula and connect it to this prior formula that I have here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we'll just be using this number that we already calculated here. And then the unit vector in the direction of W. So I'll be taking this vector W and dividing through each component by its magnitude here. So I'll have negative 2 over square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, and negative 1 over square root of 6. I would not necessarily mess with rationalizing denominators. Uh, it is sometimes helpful, especially if you're gonna graph this or think about it, to maybe go ahead and distribute through the constant that's out front, go ahead and do that scalar multiplication and simplify your answers. So we'll go ahead and do that. So here uh, we'll have eight over six. So negative four times negative two over square root of six times square root of six. So eight over six, or we'll reduce that to four thirds. And then here we'll have uh, negative four over six, so negative two thirds, and then four over six, so two thirds for that. Okay, so this would represent a vector that shows how much of V is along W. And remember, since I got a negative for this component of V along W, that would tell us that we're in the direction opposite W. Okay, um, just so that we have some calculations and some things to compare to, we're gonna also go ahead and calculate the component of W along V. So 
So similar formula here, v dot w or w dot v, that's commutative, so the order doesn't matter when you do that dot product. But you want to divide by the magnitude of the vector you're projecting onto. So I will need to do that calculation here. Okay, so up here, my scratch work up here, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the magnitude of v. Notice that I've done some extra calculations off to the side, but I have labeled them. Right, so that I can go back and grab those numbers and plug them into these later calculations. That's a really ha good habit to get into as you work on your materials for this class. You're going to do a lot of fairly simple calculations, but then be plugging them into multiple formulas. So the more you can label what you're doing so that you can grab the right numbers and put them in the right places, that'll be really helpful for you. Um, okay, so magnitude of the v vector. So I'll have square root of 3 squared is 9 plus 1 squared is 1 plus negative 1 squared is 1, so I'll get square root of 11. Okay, so component of w along v will be our dot product, negative 4 over magnitude of v, square root of 11. So again, negative tells us that those are in opposite directions, that our two vectors have something going on in opposite directions, maybe not complete opposite directions. But the negative is about the direction, and then the magnitude of this number tells you how long that is. Uh, and then I will also go ahead and calculate the vector projection of w onto v. And so again, even though you might not need to write this formula down as you do your homework, my advice would be to practice writing down that formula so that you're thinking through this, so that you're practicing memorizing that, so that eventually when you get to the test, it's already there and you're not having to, to review a lot of things at the last minute. Okay, so this is a vector projection of w onto v, and I'm going to use this component for the length of that vector. So v dot w divided by the magnitude of whatever we're projecting onto. And then I'm going to take that times a unit vector in the direction of the vector I'm projecting onto. So times v divided by the magnitude of v. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that calculation here. So I've got my scalar quantity here, negative 4 over square root of 11, and then I'm going to take that times this unit vector uh, in the direction of v. So I'm going to take the components of my vector v and divide through by my magnitude of v. So I'll have 3 over square root of 11 and 1 over square root of 11 and negative 1 over square root of 11. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that through just to simplify so that when we look at the graph, we've got a little bit simpler number to look at here. Okay, so we'll have negative 12 over 11. Uh, so square root of 11 times square root of 11 is 11. And negative 4 over 11 and positive 4 over 11. Okay, so there's the computation for that. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the graph so that we can see what these look like on the computer. Okay, so we're going to look at these vectors on some software that we will use later this semester. Uh, for right now, I don't want to get too much into how this software works. I just want to look at the examples that we calculated. So I've plotted here our vectors v and w. v is plotted in red and w is plotted in blue, both in standard position with their tail at the origin. And if I rotate this a little bit, it's pretty easy to see that we do have an obtuse angle between those two vectors. Uh, as we expected from our calculations. And what I want to graph, though, here is the projection of each vector onto the other. So the first vector that we calculated was the projection of v onto w. And so that was our vector 4 thirds, negative 2 thirds, 2 thirds. So I've graphed that here in pink, the projection of v onto w. So if you look at this, you can see that that vector is in the exact opposite direction of w. And you can see that what that vector shows is how much of v is lined up with w, uh, but in the opposite direction of w. So if perhaps that were a force, if our v vector were maybe a force, and the w vector represented the direction of motion, we might be interested in how much of that force is with or against the direction of our motion. And in this case, we'd be able to look at that. That would be represented by our pink vector here, the projection of v onto w. I'm going to ungraph that and graph instead the projection of w onto v. That's graphed here in light blue. Uh, that was our vector negative 12 elevenths, negative 4 elevenths, 4 elevenths. 
you can see that that vector is in the exact opposite direction of V and it measures how much of W is lined up with V. Um, so projection of W onto V is this vector here that's graphed in light blue. All right, if I graph both of those vectors, those projection vectors, you'll notice that one is longer than the other. Uh, we should have been able to expect that if we had thought about the size of the two scalars that we represented. Remember, those scalars represent the length of those two vectors. Uh, the absolute value of the scalar represents the length of each of those vectors. Uh, we had negative scalars, so that's why we've got these opposite directions here. Uh, but we'll look at some examples of these projections of one vector onto another vector uh, later this semester in quite a few different applications. So this is one of those things that's not going to go away. It's important that you understand how to do the calculations, but also what the calculations mean, because this is one of those things that we'll see over and over again throughout the semester.